Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to my talk, uh, what limitations and problems of REST API can be solved with GraphQL. First of all, I would like to thank you for choosing this talk. I know that at the same time there are other talks and workshops happening, and so thank you for choosing this one. First of all, uh, let me introduce myself. So my name is Vladimir Dejanovic. This is my Twitter, my mail, my blog, GitHub account if you want to follow me. Uh, I'm part of professional IT since, since 2006, and uh, my day job uh, is uh, Senior Director of B2C Technology at PVH. Uh, PVH is a fashion technology company behind brands such as Tommy Hilfiger and Kevin Klein. My night job is also involved around jugs, so I'm a founder and a leader of Amsterdam Java user group. Uh, Besides this, I'm giving talk at conferences, and I'm Java One Rockstar and Code One Star. But enough about me. So what this talk is going to be about. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about GraphQL and what GraphQL is, and then we're going to actually go and talk about some REST issues, so to say, and of course how GraphQL can help us in solving some of them. Uh, at the end, there will be some time for questions, so if you have any questions, please wait until the end. Uh, before I start, I just want to you know, highlight that all the things that I'm going to share with you are from my own personal experience, so you know, like take them with a grain of salt, no, your use case might be different than mine. Uh, also, I want to make a small disclaimer, and that is that this talk is not going to be about bashing REST. I really like REST because I think that REST APIs are very versatile, they're a very elegant way in solving all kinds of complex problems. So most of the things that I'm going to complain in this talk and actually then tell you, tell you how GraphQL can help us with some of those things are mostly around people and the way that people work, not REST per se. So if you, you know, came and expected like, you know, bashing REST talk, sorry to disappoint you. Okay, so, GraphQL. How many of you actually know what GraphQL is? Okay, so not, not a lot of people. Uh, so uh, GraphQL is basically uh, something that originated from Facebook, and basically people in Facebook encountered some problems in basically dealing with their own day-to-day -day job and dealing with REST. As a result of that, then they created something which is called GraphQL, and in, in 2015, they said, okay, like, you know what? Uh, we assume that a lot of people also outside of the Facebook are facing the same issues, so they open sourced it. Uh, the things for us that we need to keep in mind uh, is basically that GraphQL is a specification. Nothing more and nothing less. And of course, and uh, basically there are implementations in many programming languages, and there's usually more than one implementation in the same pro programming language, you know, for example, in Java, in JavaScript, Go, PHP, and so on. So there are a lot of implementations already, and every single day there are new implementations being created. Also, what we need to keep in mind is that implementations differ per se. So, you know, some implementations in some programming languages basically covered the whole specification, some covered parts of the specification, some actually like went away from the specification and did some their own way, you know, like anybody who like did the JavaScript in the old days can remember like, you know, like you do it like an internet browser but doesn't work in Firefox or vice versa and things like that, you know. So it's, keep that in mind, so you need to know which implementation you're using and basically, okay, what are its limitations and do, does it actually differ somewhere from the spec. During my talk, it's going to be mostly live coding, so fingers crossed all goes good. Uh, I'm going to use Java implementation, of course, of GraphQL, and uh, besides GraphQL Java, I'm also going to use uh, GraphQL Java Kickstarter. The reason for that is that uh, the people who actually did a great job with GraphQL Java said, okay, we're going to build an engine for actually dealing with the GraphQL and everything around the GraphQL. How you're going to actually expose this to on your end users, it's up to you. So basically, like, it's, it's not that difficult to actually plug and play into existing infrastructure or some new things, but again, it's so many possibilities out there that we don't want to basically deal with all of them. And then basically some other people came and said, okay, we want to create an easy way to just kickstart certain things, so that's why they create like Kickstarters. And for demo purposes, I prefer to use Kickstarters also in combination with this. So, let us talk a little bit about limitations and problems. So, what happens when you're a new person on the project? So basically, you either need to develop something or an existing project, or you basically need to consume something, right? I'm not sure about you, but for me, it's always okay, like, where do I start? What's the first thing that basically I need to figure out? Basically, how can I onboard myself very fast on a new project, understand, okay, what's ins and outs, why we actually use certain things, and in which way? So my attempt is always very basically simple. I always look for specification first. 
I find the specification, then I read, okay, this is the endpoints end that we expose, this is the responses that we basically send, this is like the input that we expect, and all those kind of things, right? Well, actually, like where it's, everything should be defined, hopefully. The next thing that I look after specification to read, when, especially when I'm new on a project, if I want to like consume it or build it, is also documentation. Because specification will explain to me, okay, like some REST API and all like things that are happening there, but then, okay, how that comes along in, in a bigger picture? Why this REST API even exists? What actually problem does it solve? How it actually is connected with other parts of the system? So for that, I look in documentation. And here we actually come to the first problem. So how many of you basically you know, came to the project and there was specification and documentation, they were all up to date and greatly done? Yeah, so li like I assumed, like a small amount of people, very, very small, almost nobody, like it's like two hands. So I, my experience is also the same thing, you know, like specifications and documentations are not always up to the date. So what I realized is the only thing that I can trust is the code. Code is the only truth. Because you can write something in specification, you can write something in documentation, you can talk to the business people and they could say, okay, like, okay, this is how our application behaves, this is what it actually does. But in most cases, that's not true. The only place which we really 100% can be sure what our application does, how it looks like, what it expects as an input, what it sends as an output, which status code it sent, and all those kind of things, is the code. That's the only truth that we can trust. Another thing that also, like, you know, I realized in a hard way is that, you know, bad specification or documentation is even worse than not having it done. Unfortunately, during my professional life, on more than one occasion, I spent a lot of time in reading documentation, specification, understanding things, and then, okay, like, I understand. And then I have a question, I go and talk to somebody from the team, and say, like, oh, yeah, that's, like, outdated, like, you know, years ago. So, like, yeah, thanks, then. So, in my mind, if you have a specification or documentation, and it, it's not valid, you have two options. Either kill it right away, or make it good. So, like I said, the first problem that we have is basically no specification or documentation or they're not up to the date. So let's assume that I'm a new person on the project and I have a REST API, that's all that I know. So how can I then I actually figure out, okay, like, by the way, is this big enough or should we make it bigger? And do you like, okay. So the only thing that I can actually do is, if I find my mouse, is actually I go to the POM and then I look into my dependencies. Okay, okay, so let's see what we have here, okay. We have like Spring Boot, Go away. What the hell? So basically, we have a Spring Boot starter, right? Okay, then let's see what else we have here. So then we have Spring Boot Web. Okay, cool. We have JPI, right? So we have some database here. Of course, we're going to use, okay, so we have H2, which is in memory. Okay, we use Lombok. And that's it. So the next thing, so now I know something about my application. Because it's a web and it's, I know it's a REST, then I probably need to find some controller, right? So if I go basically here and say, okay, search Java, and let's look what basically we have here. Okay, so here I have some demo controller, right? So in this case, I see, okay, I have a REST controller. It's good. I inject some services here. I have some request mapping, which is okay, like slash speakers, and then I assume I get the list of speakers, so it should be all speakers. Then I can ask speaker by ID, and basically here basically we get, okay, like, specific speaker for ID. Then I have like slash talks, and I get all the talks. However, I see here that I can also filter talks by speaker ID, right? We have request parameter, speaker ID. And last but not the least, I have all attendees. So basically I can also like find for all attendees. So now I can understand, okay, what my rest point looks like, but how actually my, what I'm sending back. So if I open basically speaker, Let's see actually what we send here. So, okay, so I have a speaker, right? So I'm sending a list of speakers, and the speaker has an ID, a name, and a Twitter. Then if we open just Pojos, then we also have attendee. Attendee is basically an ID and a name. And then we also have a talk. Talk has an ID, title, and description. So now, okay, I understand. I have a REST API, which is building something like for a conference API, right? Because we have a speaker, talk, and attendees. Uh, also, uh, I'm using here a Lombok with the at the data annotation, so that I don't really have to like write every single time all the getters and setters. So the next thing, of course, I want to run the application. So, and basically just you know like test a little bit to see, okay, to be 100% sure, 
that what I saw in the code is also like what I expect. Let me just go if I start it. So if we go here, basically if you see localhost, it was 80, it was Fox, right? This is going to be fun. So, okay, we have talks. So let's make it a little bit bigger. Then we also had the speakers, right? Speakers. So we have a speakers, right? We can ask per speaker ID. So we can actually ask per speaker ID, let's say, free. Okay, cool. Then we have also talk. We have also talks for speaker. ID is let's say three. Okay, so we kind of get understanding of what our application looks like. But again, I don't have a specification or documentation. So how can actually I do this in GraphQL? So the first thing that I need to do is actually go to the POM and uncomment certain things here. So let's just remove some dependencies. Okay, so what actually I added here is I added GraphQL Java dependency, the engine of everything that's happening. Then I added some Kickstarter tools for basically for Java tools that I don't need to do everything manually, and I added Spring Boot Starter. Yes, enable after you forget. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to define the schema. So that's a big difference between the REST and the GraphQL. In the REST, you can basically have a schema or don't have a schema. You can go code first or sch schema first. You can do whatever you want to do. In GraphQL, you always have to have a schema. Again, you can go code first, from code generate the schema, or you can go schema first and then basically map your code to, to the schema. But either way, you have to have a schema. So let's define schema. So basically, let's say type, let's talk. Then we have an attendee, right? Uh, oh, let's actually do the easy way. We can just do this, basically copy paste for the win. This, okay, so I don't need this one. I need this. So ID is int, command is int, name is string. So again, you see here, I actually say, okay, what's the name? And then basically, what's the type? And again, it's very easy. You can just do the copy paste from the code and everything will work. Okay, then I have a talk. And I can just do the copy paste. Title is command or I don't know how to type. Description is also string. Okay, and the last but not the least, we have a speaker, right? And the speaker has, let's see, yeah, okay, so this is speaker. Again, copy paste. And that's it. In, just int. Name is a string. And the Twitter is a string also. And that's it. So that basically now I defined all the types. But now I need to actually define this card of a GraphQL, which is called schema. Schema, and then here I need to see query, query. And the query is actually a new type that I need to define. And I can say, okay, so now basically here's what actually I want to allow my user to do. So my user, if you remember, he could, he could ask for all speakers. Let's return the list of speaker, yes. Then he could also ask for all talks. So just talks. Then he, okay, talk. Yes, then he could also ask for all attendees, which is array of attendees, yes. Uh, he could also ask uh, all talks by speaker ID. So they, here we say speaker ID, type int. Int, and then it's going to return the array of 
talk, and that's about it. Cool, so now we have this. What, now we basically need to add the Java code to actually do this. Let's copy this. So here I'm going to create the new package. I'm going to call it GraphQL. GraphQL. Okay, then we are going to create a new, new Java class. Call it query. So I'm going calling it query because in the schema also I have exactly the same type by the name query. So if I use the same names, then basically my Java GraphQL Java implementation will know how to map it one to one. It's going to say, okay, you have a page attendee, you have type attendee, they're the same. You have typed query, you have class query, okay, they're the same. So basically we need to use the same names and allow basically the Java code to you know, make connections, connections in an easy way. You can also use different names, but then it's going to be more tricky and basically you need to do more magic. So if you keep the same names, it's easier for, for everybody. I don't want to add it to the Git. So few, I need to do here a few things. First, I need to add component annotations so that Spring Boot can find it. Also, I need to implement GraphQL query, GraphQL query resolver. So in this way, I'm saying basically, I'm using the helper classes from the Kickstarter and saying, okay, this is basically going to be my resolver for the type query. So whenever actually you need some field from a query, come and look at here. So if I then copy paste the things that I actually had in my query, we're going to fix this soon. So first I need to auto wire everything. Uh, speaker service, uh, speaker service, yes. Speaker service, then I need to auto wire talk service. Talk service, okay, then I need to auto wire, uh, what's it, ah, attendee. Attendee service, yes, attendee service. Okay, so now I have all of those things. Now I need to actually define these methods that we have in a query. So array it becomes a list of a speaker. Speaker, yes, from the speaker, then we return all speakers. And it's here if we just say return, speaker service, find all. That's it. We need to implement import class list, yes. Then all talks become again, array becomes list, so it's list talk. Import, yes. Again, we come here, we say okay, all talks, Comes again. Come on, return. Return. Talk service. Find all. Yes. Uh, then all attendees again become list of attendee. Attendee. Okay, come on. All attendees. Again, say return. All. No. Attendee service. Find all. Right. And last but not the least, basically we need to find all talks for the specific speaker. So it's again, list, list of talk, all speakers. So here we're going to have actually the parameter and we are going to call it in speaker ID. Okay, and we are going to return everything. So we're going to say return, it's talk service, Find all talks by speaker ID. Okay, I need long actually here. I can do it from here. Speaker ID. Okay, so that's it. So if we compile the code, hopefully it should compile or I made some error. We'll see. Okay. Finished very fast, and let's now start it. So one thing that I actually forgot to mention you here is if I go back to the POM, that I have this one here, one thing here. So this one here is actually GraphQL UI. So, uh, and basically that one is used for testing during the development. So as you see here, I have like comment here on dev only. So don't allow this in production. And I'm going to demonstrate it once, okay, so I made a mistake. Okay, no matter field found. 
or speakers. Oh yeah, I forgot to, to make it all public, right? Yeah. Yes, I forgot to make it public, so you see? Live coding is always interesting, right? It's also very interesting to see how fast you can actually type. When it works, it works perfectly. When it doesn't work, then it's like, yes. <sighs> okay, so let's start it now. Fingers crossed it works this time. Okay, we're good with time still. Okay, so now it started. So now what actually I'm going to do, I'm going to localhost 8080, but I'm going to hit the URL, GraphQL. And basically here I get, like I said, like some small app, which is like basically some JavaScript, which allows me to you know, play with my GraphQL API. So what I can do here is I can say, okay, query, and I can say all talks, and then I can ask for all the things that I basically have from a talk. ID, it was title, right? And also I have a description, right? So as you can see here, I have also like autocomplete. And if I ask for it, I get the data and basically then the data about the talks. So also I can ask, for all speakers, right? I can ask for all speak. Oh, okay, let's go by speaker ID. So it's speaker ID. It's let's say free, right? It was free last time. And again, I'm going to come back with the ID, title. I'm going to get with description. And again, look, I have it like nice in here. It works. So a few things. While actually this is going to help me with not having the specification or documentation is like I said. In case of GraphQL, you have to have a schema. You have to have specification. You can't have, like, either you create a code and then from the code generate the schema, or basically you just, like, like I did, write the first schema first and then write the code which actually matches the schema. Either way, you always have to have it, which means that if I'm a new person on the project, all that I need to do is just come here, look at it, and okay, this is my whole specification. Okay, but what happens with documentation? Well, let's add some documentation quickly. So. This is some document, documentation, right? So let's kill this one. Let's build it again and let's run it. So a nice thing also about having the specification is, oops, I made a mistake. Nice thing about having the specification is that again, like, you know, then here I have like autocomplete because my client knows about the whole specification. Actually, an initial communication between the client and a server, server sends the whole specification to the client says, okay, this is the specification for my API, which is always a nice thing. This is going very fast, or something went wrong terribly. Okay, so let's just start it again. Oh, by the way, always refresh when you actually you know, redeploy. So does it still work? It still works. So another thing you can see here is documentation, right? So if I click here, I get automatically from the schema generated the documentation, which means that my spec and documentation will always going to be one to one. And if I click on a query, I see, okay, I have all speakers, all talks, all attendees, everything. It returns type of talk. And if I click on a talk, you see here is like basically this is some documentation which I put. If I click on a title, title again, again, it's type string and documentation, which means with the GraphQL, you always have specification, you always have documentation. There is no way that basically you don't have one or the other. And if you remember, basically also during the deployment time, what happened actually is that my code checks if my code and specification are one to one on the server side. And that's why I actually didn't deploy the first time because I made a mistake and says, okay, like, you know what? You have these fields in the specification, but I don't see it in the code. So like, no, I'm not going to start which is a very good thing because then you can be 100% sure that your specification is up to the date, documentation is always up to the date, and your code will not work if your code and specifications don't match one to another. Let's, let's be honest, like in REST, like we don't really have, unfortunately, you know, that kind of security. So that's the first problem, right? No specification or documentation. So, yeah. So the second thing is basically the client and the server are not always in the sync with the rest, right? Because I can actually say, okay, like, I'm going to do something, and then basically the client is also going to do something else, and we can agree on the specification, but in the end, until we actually crash track one another in production, we don't really know if it actually works or not. And again, this is solved in the GraphQL in a, si in a simple way, 
And like I said, on initial communication between the client and the server, basically the server sends back the whole spec to the client and says, okay, this is my request, this is the spec, this is how the input parameters should look like, <laughs> sorry, this is how response is going to look like. Then the client can just save it on its side, and before sending any kind of request to the server, it can check, okay, is it valid or not? Again, the question is like, if you know that your request is not valid, why even send it in the first place? But even if you're a naughty person, and you say, you force your client to actually, you know, send the bad request, and the client says, no, but you say, send it. What server is going to actually do is going to check request according to the specification, validate it first, without doing any kind of work. So it's first going to do validation, and if it's not valid, it's going to send error right away, which is, again, very nice thing, which means that actually when we write our business code, I don't have to worry is the request correct or not. I already know it's valid, it's past validation, so now I can concentrate only on the business logic and actually the things that matter to me. So again, one very often problem that we face with the REST API is okay, how much data we should send to certain endpoint. So for example, in my use case, where is my use case, yeah? So here, I'm saying okay, when I send Ask for this, basically I'm going to send all the title, basically the talks, and the tokens, an ID and a title and a description. So in this case, not a lot, three fields. But you can imagine like you have like millions of fields here. And somebody can say, okay, like, yeah, but I don't not want everything, I just want the title. So then you have to create some custom logic about the filtering, you need to agree with everybody. New people coming along, they need to understand it. New teams coming along, they also need to understand it. In a GraphQL, it's a simple thing. You just say here, okay, you just want the title, just do this and you get only the title. So we get basically filtering of fields out of the box. Additional nice feature is that if basically certain fields here basically need to go to some other database and fetch some long data and it's like very slow, in this case they were never going to be called. So you get, again, performance boost for free. Another problem that we also have is underfetching. So if you go back to my example, so here, if I want to show the talks, basically the speaker and the talks information, first I need to basically ask for all speakers, right? And then I need to ask for all the talks for the speaker. So I will need three speakers. Okay, and then basically I need to ask for all talks. Go away. So it means that I need to make multiple trips basically to my API to fetch multiple data. Again, if you start actually combining certain things in the same request, then you can come back again. Yeah, but now we're sending a lot of blob of data, right? But again, let's see how we can solve this with the GraphQL in an easy way. So let's first kill this. So only thing that I need to do is actually go here, I go to my speaker, I add field called talks, which is array of talks, and that's it. Then I need to add uh, here a new field called uh, talk resolver. Over. If I know how to type, who cares? Okay, uh, again, I annotate it with component. Okay, I, come on. I implement GraphQL, GraphQL, not query resolver, but GraphQL resolver for a type talk. So let's import this. Then I need to auto wire uh, talk service, talk service. And then again, I need to basically do the copy paste again, copy paste for the win of this field here. Uh, let's put it here, okay. So it's again public, don't forget the public list talk. It's called talks. Here, actually, we have a speaker. We get the speaker as an input parameter. Speaker, okay, and then, okay, let's import this, import, and then we say here, return, return, uh, talk service, find all talks by speaker, and we provide speaker, and that's it. So let's compile the code. So basically what I did is a very simple thing. I just went to my type speaker, I added the initial for field called talks, which is array of talk, and then because I don't want to extend my purge and create the crazy stuff and everything, I just created a new resolver, and here it's called GraphQL resolver 
for a type talk, which means that whenever there is some field in a type talk that my Java code doesn't know how to basically resolve, it's going, it should come here. Here, if you remember, in the GraphQL query, we implemented GraphQL query resolver. So that's the difference. So here then, basically, I have a, like I said, field talks, which is exactly the same like one here, talks, which returns an array of talks. And of course, because it's resolving a field for a speaker, it needs to get the full speaker, basically, so that we can actually do whatever we want to do. Okay, so this compiled, that's good. Compiling is always the first part, now it's fun part to see the, if I didn't make any mistakes. Yes, I did a mistake. Fuck. Oh, and it's not talk resolver, it's, yeah, my bad, it's for a speaker. Ooh, see? It should be for a speaker. Because, yeah, because I'm resolving speaker, I'm not resolving talk. My bad. Like I said, live coding is always interesting. Like this, I think the, the talk which I made the most mistakes so far. Which is not really fun, but, yeah. So like I said, like we just create, okay, so it started, and now again, refresh. Always you need to refresh so that basically the client, in this case my JavaScript application, gets the new spec. Otherwise it's going to say like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. So let's refresh, and then basically let's say all speakers, right? And we can say, let's say name, and let's say talks, and then we can say here title, and voila, it works. You, as you see, we are get back the data, all speakers, name, and then basically for every speaker we get all the talks. Which means that in a very easy way, we can solve under fetching. Because we can just create all the types that there are, basically make all the connections that there are basically there, there exist, and just say to the client, okay, here you are. Do whatever you want to do. If you want to filter, if you want to underfetch, overfetch, it's completely in your hands. But also remember that, because that's also, can you know, come back and bite us. Another problem, again, like that I face multiple occasions, is naming conventions. So let me explain to you a little bit more about my real life example. So uh, my team was responsible for building an API. And that API was consumed by 15 different teams. And then every single team basically wanted, of course, different fields. So that's why you know, I went for overfetching and underfetching, overfetching and underfetching the GraphQL. But also they wanted different names. So we called something like, let's say, like desks. They want descriptions. Somebody else wants like you know, long description and you know all crazy stuff. So it was a lot of meetings debating how we should call the fields so that like we are happy, but majority of our stakeholders are also happy. Well, luckily thing for us in a GraphQL, you can say like, hey, you know what? I'm going to call it exactly how I want to call it, and you can just go and call it however you want. So if you don't want to call this, where's my mouse? all speakers, you can just call it speakers. And then if you run it, it becomes speakers. Oh, you don't want to call this name, you want to call this speaker name. You just do this, and it's called speaker name. Which means that you don't have to argue anymore about this name or that name, you just say, okay, like, I'm going to call it how I want it. You have an option to rename it in whatever you want to do and just like, go and do it. I don't care. Okay, so that's overfetching, underfetching, naming conventions. So again, this is a tricky one. I'm not sure if you face this one or not, but like I said, we were creating an API and we exposed certain types of data and then some different types of data. And of course, because it's in REST, everything is about resources, different resource URLs means you resolve something to different resources, right? And then the question basically from business came and say, okay, we want, like, we want oranges and frogs in the same endpoint. And we were like, yeah, that's not really according to the REST specification and things like that. We can make it happen, we can make it work, code doesn't care, but then how we actually document that, how we actually write the specification, it's not really an easy thing to do. If you never face this problem, like, then good luck, that, that's a good thing that you never faced it, but we faced it and it was like, okay, how we actually deal with this? Well, 
again, the good thing about GraphQL is that you can do this in an easy way. So the only thing that you need to do is basically you just see here, union, let's say all, and let's say talk or speaker. And that's it. And now we can basically use a new type here, and we can say like all, all, and we return all. And that's it. And now we of course need to add the code. It's going to do this. So in, in Java, of course, what is all? Well, of course, it's an object, right? So we say public, public list object, big O object, yes. Then we say all, all. And then we say list one, no list, list one is, uh, it was talks and speakers, right? Talk, service, find all. Then we say list, list two is speaker services, find all. Then we say list uh, one dot add all list two, and we return list one. And again, if I didn't do any errors, this should work, fingers crossed. So it's very easy in GraphQL to just create unions of whatever you want to do. Again, refresh. So now basically I can do query, all, all, and then basically say on talk, return me the title, on speaker, return me the, spe uh, the name, and that's it. And this works. The trick here is that now the only thing that I actually I can ask here, like as a general one, is a type, a type name, which then I can use basically in the front end to actually, okay, okay, here is the type, so basically I'm dealing with these fields, okay, this is the speaker, so I deal with this field. But again, creating the union now is very easy, so if you have a business case, you can very easily implement it. Another problem that also I sometimes uh, faced in basically in building the REST APIs is okay, I have like few resources, but they're kind of similar. For example, in this case, I have a talk, uh, no, I have a speaker and attendee, and both are humans, right? So how can actually then I leverage that? So sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's more difficult. In the case of GraphQL, it's a very easy thing. You just create interface, human, and say name, string. And that's it. Then you have attendee, implements human. You have speaker, implements human. And that's it. And now we can also here basically ask for all humans. Humans, the human. Yes, that's it. I can now define basic, uh, the thing that you need to remember about interface in a GraphQL is not like in Java. So I can't really now basically here remove in that indeed the string name. I have to have it. So it's kind of a little bit like if you have something in interface and type implements the interface, all the fields from the interface have to be basically present in the type or you're going to get an error. So it's a little bit different from what we used in Java. So here I can define uh, interface if I want to called human. Human. Okay, cancel, and I can say public get name, right? And then I can go to my attendee, and I can say implements human. I can go my, to my speaker and say implements human. Then I can go to, uh, I define all, all humans, right? All humans, okay, cool. Then I can go to the query. Again, add new one, public uh, list, now we can see actually, hum no, no, all humans, no, yes, human, all humans, and I can say, let's just, let's just copy paste this one. But now it's not going to be speak talks, it's going to be attendee service. 
So uh, transistors. Transistor is dot find all. Okay. Again, let's compile the code. Again, fingers crossed I didn't do any errors. Okay, so let's start now. So as you see, like I just basically defined one simple interface, then implemented here. And I did the same thing in the Java code. You don't have to do things in the Java code. If you don't do it in the Java code, it's still going to work perfectly, but I think it's just you know nicer and cleaner if basically you keep everything as it should be. So let's refresh. So now I can here actually ask for all humans humans and now because actually I'm asking for an interface I can say something like name and I get the names of the speakers and attendees again if I want to distinguish between them I can ask for type name so that I know what I'm dealing with who but also what I can do is a little bit different I can also say on speaker okay so I know the speaker has a Twitter right yeah Twitter so I can say okay and it's below, somewhere below here. Yeah, so speakers now also get the Twitters. Or I can just even like remove name here. I can remove also the type name and I can say speaker, I can say like speaker name, speaker name, name. While I say on attendee, just get the name. So I can also do something like this. So here I have like names. Here I have a speaker name speaker. And again, still the specification, the documentation still is up to date, everything is all up to date. I can still see every single thing, which is a nice thing to keep in mind. Okay, so that's unions done, resources done. So who's like who likes the discussion about which status code should we use and how we should form a there, right? <laughs> yeah, so small people. So again, you know, when you're building the rest, it's a good thing that you can do whatever you want to do, but sometimes, you know, like if everything is open for discussion, depending on the culture and the company, maybe everything will be open for discussion, which doesn't really add the value always. So the good thing about the GraphQL is that it's specification, which means that if we have an error, GraphQL, because it's a spec, says, okay, like this is how you should deal with errors. So in this case, I'm forcing something which is not good, and I get, okay, data, is equal to null, and then basically here we get some errors. So I'm not saying that GraphQL did it perfectly and that we should all create errors in this way. Only thing that I'm saying, it's just because it's specification, somebody thought about it, so we don't have to like have long meetings about it. We can just say, okay, this is the specification, this is how we deal with it, and then just you know, move on to something more interesting. And again, like choose, if you didn't, again, if you're, do, you're doing any kind of APIs, Preferably choose any kind of spec, it's going to save you a lot of time. Okay, so last but not the least is what happens if we have a stream of data. So usually when we build the REST, REST comes like from the, was 2000, 2001, something like that, right? And basically in those days, the idea is we send a single request, we get a single response. But nowadays, we, uh, we kind of expect that we send a single request, but we get back the stream of data. So how we actually we deal with that? So I don't have enough time to actually code it on stage. So let me just figure out how to get out from this one. Okay, so let's, uh, so I'm going to just show you uh, the code. By the way, the whole code is already online. Everything is, I'll share you the link with you so you can just easily use it. This window, oh, this certainly. Presentation mode, go back to presentation mode. View mode and presentation mode. So what I actually did for this purpose is again, we go back to the schema. We defined in a schema something called subscriber. Type subscriber, basically we say, okay, here's like score for the talk. I will provide you as an input parameter name of a talk and then you're going to give me back the stream of the scores. So keep in mind, also this is going to be like the stream of a, of a scores. Here we just say single score. And the score is a simple basically type which has a talk title and integer. So then I define the simple page of called score which has like just a talk and a score and that's it. And then I define subscription. Again, annotated with component, implement GraphQL subscription resolver. 
So in the case of the query, it's a query resolver. As you can see, in the case of a subscription, is subscription resolver. So that's how we all know, okay, what these fields should be doing. In the case of subscription, then I, of course, I defined score for all talks, exactly the same like in schema. I'm taking input parameter talk string, basically name of a talk, and I'm returning the publisher of a score, and then here I have some boilerplate code. Actually, I'm creating observable, which is basically, yeah, so I'm just creating obser observable. I create schedule executor service here, with a pool size of one, and then basically at fixed rate, basically every two seconds, I'm just creating a score with some title that came as an input. I put some random number, and basically I just you know, send it back to whoever is interested. Then I say connect observable. Basically, I, from observable, I create connectable observable. I connect to it. Then I transfer it to flowable, and basically I add back pressure strategy buffer. That's it. Okay, now I need to find... I lost everything, that's good. It's always fun when you lost everything. Okay, so it's RQL05. So let's build the code. So I know that there are no errors here because this one was like not a long time ago. Okay, let's start it and let's just see how it works. By the way, I forgot, did it go, go very fast or not? Who says I, I, go, I went very fast? Who's afraid to uh, raise the hand? <laughs> I actually realized maybe I went too fast, but. Okay, so it started, now again, refresh. So what we can do actually now is say subscription. Okay, it was uh, score for talk. Talk, I'm gonna just say like my talk. Let's say title, and we have score, right? And we click it here, and now it should start, and it should actually start like changing the, the, the value. So this is one part, for example, that the specification didn't really nail it yet and says, okay, this is how you need to deal with subscription. So according to the spec, it just said, okay, like there's like query for reading only data. That's going to happen like in parallel. So you, you, I can have multiple requests and just, you know, like change the data. Then there is mutation, which actually just, you're changing the data, so it's done in sequence. And then there is subscription, which actually says, okay, you will send a single request, and you're going to get back the stream of data. But how, like you're going to connect the client and the server, isn't really clear in spec. So some people, of course, who needed to implement it just went with the web sockets, and then some other people says, okay, like, yeah, let's also like jump on the same wagon. So it's, like I said, you need to, work, to think about, okay, what's my specification and implementation doing? I can just kill this one so it doesn't take resources. So basically, yeah, that's about the stream of data. Uh, I don't have a lot of time, so thank you for being here, uh, for allowing me to present this talk. <laughs> All code examples are basically on, on this URL, so you can see there, there's like in it, where actually you can start, and there's like multiple steps, and you like read me is like, I, I hopefully, detail enough so that you can actually you know, like do it yourself and basically just you know like jump through the code and basically see okay what's happening why it's happening and things like that so we have one and a half minutes for questions yep uh, so the question is can you generate the schema you mean like you write the code and then generate the schema out of it or So uh, if you want to first to generate the, the business model and then generate the schema from it. Uh, yes, so basically, like I said, there are two ways that you can deal with GraphQL. So you can write first the schema, like I did, and then write the code to tie to it. But there's also a way that you write the code first, and then the code will generate the schema. So basically, if you don't write the schema, there is basically the GraphQL use a specific request to the server, which sends, and basically there are like some parameters, and you say, okay, like, when, give me the schema. So in, in that case, basically, your Java code or any other code in any language will generate the schema and like send it right away. So basically, yeah, you can do it. You can like go from the code, and, and basically the schema will be auto-generated every single time. 
Any other questions? Okay. Any other questions? Yep. What about security? How do we prevent exposure of the backend? Okay, so the question is about security and exposure of a backend. So I have a good news and a bad news. So the the good news is, actually the bad news is that GraphQL doesn't really care about security. It's up to you, which is a bad thing. Uh, the good thing is that there are hooks that you can actually use to protect yourself. So how you're going to do that, it again comes to you. So uh, at the moment, uh, you get to send the whole schema, and it basically then you can protect certain parts of the schema, because there are ways that somebody actually requests something that you say, okay, like you can access this part only if you have these you know, rights, things like that. If you want to actually protect that somebody even sees certain fields, then it's mo even more tricky. So it really comes back to your use case, what you want to do. So if you just want to say, okay, like you will see the field, but you can't, will not get any data unless you have certain ro roles or access rights, things like that, there are hooks to do that. If you want to really not even expose certain parts of a schema to certain users, then you really need to go deep into the engine of, of basically of a graphical implementation. So it can be done, but it's more tricky. So it's it's not out of the box, so to say, yet. Does that answer your question? Any other questions? 16 seconds more. I think no, yeah? Okay, then that's it. Thank you very much.